time to talk money. With us now is Margaret Schaefer of Legal Aid of Nebraska. And let's start off by telling folks a little bit about Legal Aid and about the Elder Access Line. Legal Aid of Nebraska is the law firm in the state of Nebraska that serves people that are generally low income. But through the Elder Access Line, we also can help people that are over the age of 60, or actually 60 plus, um, with their legal issues and questions, regardless of their income and assets. Let's start off by talking a little bit about debt. That's, that's the big problem that you deal yes, with, right? I sure do. There's a lot of seniors in Nebraska that are struggling with debt. A lot of times something's happened unforeseen. A spouse has passed on, or perhaps they've lost a job, or become ill, um, maybe had some other tragedy in their life, and they find they can't make ends meet. And so trying to figure out how to use their scarce resources to take care of necessities becomes a burden and a challenge. I think when a lot of people hear the Elder Access Line or Legal Aid of Nebraska, they think that it's just to deal with legal issues specifically, mm -hmm. but you offer a lot of advice. We offer a lot of advice. We can help folks that are dealing with these kinds of issues at all stages. So I might have someone calling me who is current on all of her bills, but is really having a hard time prioritizing. So we can give some good advice about what the consequences might be of paying or not paying each one of their items as they come in. And then if they are unable to pay everything, then they may face lawsuits, they may face other legal actions, and we can help them through those too. If you're sued for uh, a debt, let's talk a little bit about that process. Yeah. If you're sued for a debt, we do an analysis to see what the risk might be to you. There are some provisions in the law that protect folks even though they owe a debt. And those provisions are pretty straightforward and pretty obvious for the most part. If you have been sued, your first step is to file an answer. An answer is to dispute that you owe it. Sometimes that doesn't make any sense for folks because they know they owe the debt. That's not the question. The question then becomes what income and assets would be at risk from a creditor. It's very important for clients to understand that Social Security is a protected or exempt form of income. So if someone's receiving Social Security, it's available for their necessities, for those things that they need to buy now. It's not available to be garnished by a creditor in the way that wages might be for someone who's employed. There are other protections under the law for assets. And so we'll review what do you own, what might be at risk, now that you've got a lawsuit against you, and what is protected. And a lot of times folks are much relieved to find out that what they have is protected already and that they don't have as much risk as they thought. There are income guidelines that we deal with with all of these things. Are there some of those that are easy to address in the time we have? Well, income guidelines for um, the collection issues, um, it's more income type than amount. Like I mentioned, the Social Security, there's also other federally protected benefits. And so it's what kind of income you have that determines whether it's protected or not. What about collections calls? Let's talk oh, about those. Oh boy. The Fair Debt Collection Practices Act does allow for some protections for folks if they're getting a lot of calls. What you need to do is send a letter to the collection company and let them know that you do not wish to receive phone calls anymore. We call it a do not contact letter. We have samples of those on our website and that website will be uh, uh, listed on the uh, screen and at the end of this segment. But the uh, do not contact letter is just a very simple mechanism that people can do themselves to help bring a little peace of mind. Let's talk more about uh, bankruptcy. That's something mm. that uh, a lot of people deal with, but especially some uh, older Nebraskans. Sometimes elders want to do a bankruptcy, and there might be a reason to do that. If you have unprotected income, such as wages, you may need to do a bankruptcy. A lot of times folks don't need to do a bankruptcy, but you don't know that unless you've walked through it with our uh, paralegals on our elder access line. A bankruptcy, there's two kinds. One would have you making payments, and that would be at Chapter 13, and that might be necessary if there is some secured debt or unexempt assets or things like that. A Chapter 7 is more common, 
and it's a simple bankruptcy generally. And that's for folks who really don't have any um, property they're trying to protect. There are income requirements for those kinds of bankruptcies, and they're very, very complicated legal matters. So we recommend a phone call just to talk it through. Let's talk more about scams and fraud. Uh, it, it, do you get a lot of questions regarding? I do. I get a lot of questions about scams. Sometimes people will call me because they think they've won something, and then they find out that they didn't. What I want people to be looking out for, for to protect themselves on scams and frauds are those things that don't sound right. If you have not entered a contest but you're winning a contest, that's not good. If somebody wants you to pay money to claim a prize, that's not so good either. Those are red flags we're looking for. The other things I want people to be thinking about are, is it something you have to do right now? That hard sell, the don't wait, that's not something you want to participate in. If you have someone coming door to door, especially with that hard sell, then you want to be really careful about signing up for a service or buying a product or having repairs done. If you didn't know you needed that service before they knocked on your door, you need to think really carefully about signing up for it after they knock on your door. When we talk about financial issues, I suspect that a lot of older Nebraskans will say, when I look back on it, there's one thing I wish I knew or wish I would have done differently. Mm -hmm. can, you, can you share one of those or, or well, the most common? The most common is getting information. If people know what their rights are, then they're not going to be taken advantage of. If people know what to look for, they generally can avoid those scams and frauds. Go with your gut, but find out, get educated, and get information about your situation. Well, we are a rural state, a very large state, and most of it is rural. Yes. Uh, so one of the great things about what you do is that it's available via telephone from mm -hmm. anywhere in the state of Nebraska. That's right. You can call us from anywhere. Um, we're happy to talk over a variety of issues, not just consumer things, but many other kinds of, of situations. We talk about family law matters, public benefits, lots and lots of different things. Housing, oh, I get calls for that, for other legal documents. We can help with a variety of things, and we're just a phone call away. We're open limited hours. That's because of the nature of staffing, but we're open 9 to noon and 1 to 3 Monday through Thursday and 9 to noon on Fridays. And again, that phone number will be listed on your screen at the end of the session. It's important work that you do, uh, so thank you for making it available to folks all across the state. I love working on the Elder Access Line, and I love talking to Nebraska seniors every day. All right. Well, the phone number for the Elder Access Line and more information about Legal Aid of Nebraska showing on your screen now. Thank you.